Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, December 11th, about 10 a.m. here outside of Houston, Texas, at the Cosmic Obsession Observatory Dome. Uh, we're here again. Uh, if you didn't know, every weekend we get a lot of work done here at the observatory to get it prepared uh, for the upcoming first light. Uh, when the telescope is high atop the pier and the dome is aperture Be an exciting time. I wanted to uh, thank Mr. T-Bar 1984 for his work with my images from September 2nd. His work is going to allow me to do the astrometry on the images so that I can submit my September 2nd pictures of Comet Lenin to the International Astronomical Union so that they can be verified and I can put that issue behind me and uh, I'll be happy when that's done. I didn't realize when I started how uh, much work goes into making scientific observations of space. I started off great by taking images, and you can't, and thankfully I have the images, and they'll always be there for the information, but taking the information off the images and sending it to the right uh, organization uh, is the hard part. And I guess that is the reason why uh, I'm doing these reports and the shows. One, so that I can learn. And two, so that maybe the listeners and the viewers can learn as well. Because we're going to be showing you how to do the, how to learn, or how we learn, how to do the scientific research that we plan on doing with the introduction of the Cosmic Obsession Research Dome. Astrom astrometry, astrometry is the science of measuring uh, the movement of an object in the night sky. More than just taking pictures, you are responsible as the observer who wants to submit the information scientifically to know the distance of the object from known stars know the magnitude of the object uh, compared to uh, the other stars. I, I, I don't know if you have to know the magnitude, but I suppose you're learning the magnitude also. But first it's important to know what stars are in the image that you've taken uh, first. And T-Bar, Mr. T-Bar, 1984, has done that for me by showing me, uh, comparing my images, the raw images, with his software, and he showed me now. Uh, what stars I need to uh, get more information on, know the distance apart, measure the distance from the comet's nucleus to the nearest uh, known star, and then over the four images, five images that I took, because that time frame is uh, between the 20 to 60 minutes, they like to take different images. Uh, you can't really do astrometry with one image, a single image. You uh, need to get it moving. You need to see it moving to measure the movement so that it can go into the orbital information, the ephemerates for that known object. Uh, I have not fully learned how to do it yet. I have not completed the process of doing it, but over the next couple of weeks, we'll definitely find out how astrometry works and how uh, it's going to play an important role in what we do here at the Dome, or what I'm researching. Uh, what many of us are researching are the objects in space that are flying by uh, asteroids, comets, and any unknown objects that are unknown as of right now we're interested in and we'll be tracking. But uh, there's going to be a lot of new information coming out. There's going to be uh, some videos edited out so that they, rather than short snippets of information, it's going to, inf it's going to have a lot more information in the final edited video. Uh, the website Cosmic Obsession is going to get new tabs such as Day Life, which today, this is Day Life. What I'm doing today is Day Life because it's during the day and what we're doing during the day at Cosmic Obsession. And then there's the Night Life. Cosmic Obsession Nightlife will be everything that we're going to do in the evening and what is uh, forthcoming 
for you as uh, amateur or amateur astronomers, astronomers to be looking out for. So I know you're going to be hearing more about the name Cosmic Accession Nightlife. Uh, full details will be coming uh, on the website. Uh, I'm going to be putting up more information on my research with Mars. I hope that you get a chance to let me know what interests you, uh, what we're doing right, maybe what we're doing wrong. I want to thank you for watching all the videos that I'm producing. Uh, the Perfect Minds channel has over 300 videos now and I know that there's a lot of information. Uh, some great information, some middle of the road information and some information that's just a part of the process to get this all done. Um, I wanted to talk about first light. First light is tentatively set for Saturday, February 25th. I had a tentative date of November 11th that I had to pass by because we were not far enough along in the project here. Uh, if we're going to have an event, a first light event here, we want to have the observatory uh, up and running and we want good weather. The weather part's kind of a, a tricky situation because I plan on doing a lot of preparation and, and really getting a lot of the word out about our first light here. Locally, uh, through the media, whatever media wants to, you know, finds it interesting. I'm going to give them an opportunity through press releases to get involved. We already have a lot of our friends and followers and listeners and people that we've interacted with who want to be here for first light. So weather can play a role in what happens because I can say three months out that February 25th is going to be the date but if the weather is not good then I'm going to have to have another date and I suppose what we're going to do uh, is do a February 23rd, 25th March 5th I think the next Saturday so it would be Saturday of February 25th or the following Saturday the first Saturday in March I'm going to start getting back on that track because we're really getting close. Bob's inside the observatory right now, uh, still working on the mud. Uh, the mud on the sheetrock, once that's finished, the walls will be finished, uh, sanded, and uh, there'll be some texture put on them, and then those walls will be done, and there'll be nothing left but to uh, install a couple of lights that we have. We have some red and white can lights that we're installing, some fluorescence. But, I mean, once we get the lights all in and everything's buttoned up, it's going to be time to move in the telescope. And then after that telescope's in, we're going to start using it. And the first light event is planned for February 25th. I hope to have uh, a lot of people here. I'm going to uh, let Richard Hoagland know when first light is. Uh, and see if he wants to come. Hopefully he will. Maybe he'll be here. Uh, I have a lot of people informed, so uh, I could drop a couple of names right now, but I hope that there's going to be a lot more folks, including you, if you have the opportunity to come down. Uh, Stone, if you're going to come down, it's back on February 25th. Uh, Prophet Chaser, if you're coming down, February 25th. John Zascoda, if you're coming down to film the event for Celestron, February 25th. Uh, Danny, you're more than welcome to come down, Danny. Uh, I know it's not very far from where you are in Austin, so come on down and enjoy it. Uh, I hope to have presentations and slideshows and anything else that I can come up with. If you have an idea what I should have at the party, you let me know. I know I tried this the last time, and you really don't get too much input, so it's all up to, it's all up to I guess it's up to me, and, and then once Bob agrees to it, we'll go from there. Uh, I thought there was more I wanted to say, but I guess we'll hold off until the next uh, episode, or the next segment of Cosmic Accession Day Life, or Night Life, Day Life and Night Life. Uh, the weather outside is kind of cloudy. We have not been able to do uh, a mobile broadcast through his telescopes because the weather's been awful and all the work that's going on. 
but we'll have another one soon. I don't have a tentative date for when our next live broadcast will be, but again, once this observatory is finished, there'll be a lot more opportunities to do the live broadcast because we can just pop on and pop off. Uh, again, what's holding us back from doing more live broadcasts are the two and three hour setups uh, of the mobile position that we have on the other side of the dome in the, in the driveway of the shop. Okay, I guess that's it for now. Uh, my Texans are playing the Cincinnati Bengals. I hope that they win because if the Texans can win, I think I, this will be the first year that we are going to the playoffs, and I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I've been wanting them to go to the playoffs for eight years now, so I hope the Bengals lose terribly. If you're from Cincinnati, I'm sorry. After the game, uh, I think we're going to go get a Christmas tree. So I'll have the video camera out for that too. And other than that, you probably won't see this video till later in the afternoon. But I hope you had a good morning. I'm going to go in and see what Bob's doing. Or, yeah. And I'm going to let you go for now. We'll talk to you later.